This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. More on that at the end. Other than the babies carrying over from three to five, this feels like the first episode to pick up directly after last week with Vision gone and Wanda still in her costume. Although it's a little weird to think that she didn't go looking for Vision, but she answers that in very 2010 sitcom language. Well, if he doesn't want to be here, there's nothing I can do about it. Intentionally expanding the borders of the false world we created. <laughs> <laughs> that modern family lighthearted percussive heavy music while she's trapping more people in her torture box. Hex. Hex for hexagons, like on the blankets. And obviously we've hit the depression stage of grief, it's the most obvious, she can't even get out of bed. Lots and lots and lots of drinks in that fridge. But still no food. Oh, I don't eat food. Guess the kids don't either. It's probably just a case of the Mondays. <sighs> Am I right? <sighs> no. No, man. No, man. I like how fast we slide past the little serial killer cutouts. Also, since Vision isn't around for the A story, it's a Wanda-centric episode. Side note, this might be my favorite of all the theme songs, possibly my love for The Office, though this version is better and also happy endings. A show canceled way before its time. Here's a tweet from five years ago to prove I'm for real. And that's very modern family -y. Even if their title sequence is yellow rather than red, but marketing material's red. So, you probably thought it was red. I did. I know this might not track exactly with our understanding of Wanda's passive control in the world, but still, Vision got knocked out when he was outside the hex in a cinematic 239 aspect ratio, and now that he's regaining consciousness in our 2010 sitcom, his world expands to 169 to follow suit with the rest of Wanda's reality. We locked eyes. That was a unspoken understanding. Hard pass. Who could blame her when she's got this man waiting at home? I have. No answers. <laughs> Honesty? Go with Agnes. <laughs> I promise I won't bite. I actually did bite a kid once. I can't help but appreciate the collective online response to this joke being, did Agatha actually eat Billy and Tommy? Because comics are messed up and we still haven't figured out how to port them perfectly to maintain their insanity. So Hayward sent this email on purpose two episodes ago just to see if Vision could leave. Poor Vision, everyone's trying to get him to leave. Major Goodner, Captain Rambo. How is she not at least a scroll? What was this? Everyone thought it would be Reed Richards and we'd get an actual cameo from John Krasinski, which was quite the ask realistically, but instead it was Major Goodner. Cool truck though. And just in case you couldn't remember who this guy was, he's the one who wouldn't help her with that heavy equipment, so I think he had it coming. Do you think maybe this is what you deserve? Once you know it's Agnes, it seems insane to think you missed her voice the first time, and maybe you didn't, but I did. Either way, making the reveals a little more obvious to some of your audience in the same episode of the reveal is always something I've liked. Gives you the feeling of getting it before everyone else, but minimizes you spoiling it for everyone else. You're not supposed to talk. And I love the unspoken rule of the silent interviewers behind the fourth wall, especially in Modern Family, which, fun fact, the show was initially set up as a college kids documentary, but that got scrapped and they decided to keep the talking heads portion even though it makes absolutely no sense and anytime they aren't doing interviews, they barely acknowledge the cameras. To anchor you back to your reality, side effects include feeling your feelings, confronting your truth, seizing your destiny, because the world doesn't revolve around you. Mm. Or does it? <laughs> The ads have been getting more and more on the nose, and this depression med commercial is perfectly at home in the 2010s. Possibly more depression. And it's not even a joke that many drugs carry potentially worse versions of the symptoms they're treating as a symptom, which is just a mind blower. You're quiet, Agnes. On the inside. Obviously, since she's blocking his telepathy with her magic, but also because her lines aren't being written by his creator and mom, so her brain really isn't part of this reality. Makes you, makes you think, huh? You know, it's sort of a foregone conclusion at this point that costumes will be perfect, vehicles will be real, and that everything you see on screen will have the utmost of care put into it, and I just wanna say, I see ya. Watch out! I mean, not to mention the visual effects. Well, that's just an awesome scene. And I don't know how she can't call herself Spectrum here since we see her split up on a spectrum of her other personalities, although her outfit is perfectly photon. Finally, a visual I can understand for why I shouldn't grab onto live wires. It's the magenta cyan glowy stuff. Also, Monica's ratio changes as she runs into down. I came back and died again. And she had to watch. And we were also totally just super fine and not traumatized by it at all. Obviously, Wanda had no ill effects, just totally normal popcorn flick stuff, no need for an entire miniseries to give the main character affected closure. Corporal form was born of Ultron's plan for global genocide. Oh, and also it goes all the way back here. <laughs> Classic way to prove superhero landing. Don't let him make you the villain. Well... 
like that there are no kids seen through the window where they'd be lining up because they're literally appearing out of nowhere. And even though Darcy is aware of the farce, she still falls victim to it. And a clear indication that Wanda is leaving Westview and entering Agatha's reality since the aspect ratio stretches back out to 239. That you even well, now it's all over the place, but I do love those witch boots. It's been Agatha all what an amazing song. And not only has she been messing with stuff from the beginning, even been aware of the camera, she also sings her own theme song. Snoopers gonna snoop. Fake Tro's alive. Crazy to think how not long ago MCU TV and MCU movies used to be mostly separate. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. would make decisions not honored by the movies, and then the movies would do stuff that completely altered the shows. Now it's all one big thing. I'm tough on our new Disney overlords, but I, for one, am pretty stoked on this. Ha. And this episode is all Agatha, so we get a purple smoke magic screen wipe. <laughs> That's a fun expectation subversion. Oh, right, Salem. So these normies found a witch, a woman who, like, did math or could swim or something, and now they're gonna execute. Oh, shoot, they're witches too. Dull knowledge above your age and station. Isn't that like exactly what Strange did? The M in MCU stands for misogyny. They simply bent to my power. And a Catherine Hahn smirk to remind us why she's always a win, and also reminded me of this laugh. <laughs> I mean, she tried to warn you. I cannot control it. Cool crown, you're, you're gonna die though. That accent really comes and goes. <laughs> Come on, everyone. I like this joke as much as the next guy. What happened to your accent? What happened to yours? But people's accents do change over time, either by choice or immersion, especially when they're based on fake countries and languages. Nothing? These are runes, Wanda. You may know about some spells, but clearly haven't learned not to do villain monologues yet. I got close with fake Pietro. Pietro, if you will. Oh, I will. I mean, I stole that while forgetting you ever said it, although I prefer Pietro. But you're so crippled by your own self-doubt that you believed it. You can call that a lampshade if you want, something in the text itself used to explain away a hard-to-explain plot point, but it's pretty much what the show is about, that Wanda's grief is so strong she shut herself off from reality. Literally. Here's a study to achieve even the smallest convincing illusion. You're even running illusions miles away at the edge of town. Magic on autopilot. So we're finally getting Agatha's reason for being in Wanda's show, and I love that the primary reason seems to be jealousy. How do you not know the fundamentals? Who are you? Who are you? What's your secret, sister? We're so used to audience signal type tropes, the ones that are there to make sure the viewer knows explicitly what's going on, that when they don't happen, I just about jump up and cheer. This one being that Wanda didn't flinch from having her hair pulled. She's got more pressing things on her mind. Repete. Memoria. Sometimes the Latin spells are super easy to translate, like in this case, repeat or recall memory. But it's time to look at some real reruns. Nah, you're still playing to the audience, aren't you, Agatha? You old scamp. Loud, isn't he? <laughs> We've entirely left the sitcom reality. The music is somber and reflective. We're seeing the memory of the night that Wanda lost both her parents, and Agatha is still cracking one liners, waiting for audience laughter. Love the Cold War aesthetic. Wanda! I mean, we're right here. That's a fantastic transition. Agatha making Wanda actually relive the events rather than just view them. Plan shenanigans. What the shenanigan again? Shenanigan can sometimes be a little scary. You mean shenanigans? Oh! <laughs> You're about shenanigans, right? In hindsight, at least Wanda didn't materialize Dick Van Dyke into Westview, so there's that. There was always a Nurse Betty undercurrent to this show, but this really nails it home. It was just a little delayed. The only way forward is back. Did Agatha write Endgame? It's funny how they had no idea when they put a mind control rock in Loki's scepter that it would eventually become the Mind Stone. And yet, it's believable that Thanos would have hidden its true nature and color so no one would realize what it was. This is definitely Wanda for the record. Again. So Wanda had some editing practice way back even before Age of Ultron. Hey, Brian Cranston is always a win, obviously. But what is grief? If not love, persevering. That's a good line. What's unfortunate about it going viral on Twitter for someone liking it in just the wrong way so that everyone else decides it wasn't worthy of praise is that, while the line alone is great, it's important to remember who was saying it and why. 
Vision has essentially reworded better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all, because that's Vision's reality. So he looks at someone mourning loss and is almost jealous. And to be fair, this is Vision's intellectual analysis of something he can't understand. It wasn't meant to be profound, which makes it all the more meaningful. Especially to Wanda, who lost the greatest connection she had in her life, making Vision's frank desire to comfort and understand her a very believable start to their relationship. And even Agatha is touched. When I came back, he was gone. His body. Right, because she dusted while kneeling over his body, so she was brought back an instant later and he'd been taken away. Not everyone has the kind of power that could bring their soulmate back online. That's not why I'm here. Now we realize that this was always Hayward's plan. I think he even intended to plant the idea in Wanda's mind. She hadn't even considered it yet. <laughs> First name, the last name, Vision. Maybe that wasn't the most satisfying explanation, especially for those of you expecting Mephisto being at the heart of all this, but knowing that the theme of the show is grief, this is the only way it could have happened. And it's really cool to look at. But even if they had written it as in her grief she made some deal with Mephisto, it would have sucked the palpable pain out of this moment. Just in general, there's a very fun behind the scenes feel to this entire sequence, but I love that it's necessary within the narrative. Everything else has been Wanda's origin, which is where Agatha expected to learn how she did it, but the truth, the truth that Agatha had been hoping wasn't the truth, is all revealed right here. You're supposed to be a myth, a being capable of spontaneous creation. But that makes you the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, it's always a win when they finally give someone their hero name. White Vision? Previously on WandaVision. All right, now that we're at the last episode, I figured I'd line up all the previously on WandaVision since Wanda sounded a little more sullen than I remember, and... Previously on WandaVision. 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 Yep, she's been getting progressively more annoyed and depressed as the episodes have gone on, because reading that line would get tiring. It's you, the Scarlet Witch. Ah, Scarlet Witch frames intercut into the recap. What do you say? I say car! And that maybe you've dealt with other witches, but never an Avenger who's fought in an airport against other Avengers while breaking the Honda Accords. And that's what we call a callback. Quick, grab the boots, they're probably magic. Run. Talk about being blinded by love. She didn't bother reading his mind, or listening to his sinister robotic voice, or looking at his ugly scowl, or his white skin, or what, casing? The power of love. But hey now, you'd like to think that not even blank vision would start nolaning out. See, that's spoilers avoided, no sweat. Fake vision to the rescue. Fission, f fission, f fission. You know, it just it doesn't really work. Badass bad guy? T2 moment at least. You must be destroyed. Everyone goes right for the stone, which really makes you wonder why Vision didn't do that with Thanos. Oh, wait, that was the entire reason they nerfed him with this blade, wasn't it? Hey, another one of those times that I went back to watch this scene and then watched all of Infinity War instead, most of Civil War. This job is hard. If only you had a little more Vision. <laughs> That's a good one, Hayward. Ah, I guess Hayward does have Vision. <laughs> of course, Jimmy would like that one. The credit where credit is due. Did you know there's an entire chapter devoted to you in the Darkhold? That's the book of the damned. Darkhold lessons. Your power exceeds that of the Sorcerer Supreme. I feel like Strange would have something to say about that, but for the record, just like Feige said, leaving Strange out of this made perfect sense. It would have taken away from the theme and could have made it feel like an ad for Multiverse of Madness. She could be friends with your boys. If you like that storyline, really anything. If you could just let her out of her room. Your grief is poisoning us. Oof, Wanda finally gets to hear about the consequences of her magic, an all too familiar situation that makes this response totally in line. And it's a pretty good representation of what Wanda has been doing all along and how little she knew about it. You fan of Steven Seagal? That's such a loaded question, but mostly yes, obviously. You're Ralph Boner? Perfect encapsulation of the audience reaction. My husband's on a business trip. Tell him I love him. Not to come back here. Dark. We have your nightmares. Dark. If you won't let us go, just let us die. And dark. Ha, I got this trying to send her back to episode one. But I'm not the true vision. Only a conditional vision. <laughs> conditional vision. While I'm glad we got a little pew pew vision laser v laser, I love that we end their conflict with a thought experiment because of course they would. And I can't blame Paul Bettany for saying he was excited to act across from himself. The visions really kill the whole who's a vision, you a vision ship of Theseus discussion. Neither is the true ship. Both are the true ship. Ah, learning new skills. Not the last one either. Nice tricks. I like yours too. Compliments all around. 
And I realize Hayward gets a little mustache twirly here, but the more I think about it, this was always him. I'm not taking the blame off of Wanda completely, but he specifically uses object pronouns about Vision, talks about how much Vision's body is worth to the government, plants the idea in her head that she can resurrect him and then lets her see his dismembered body, possibly with the hope that she'd zap him back to life right there. He has no concern for anyone else, he's even willing to murder children because none of it is real to him, clearly. Dude needs to watch The Measure of a Man, or at least day to day. Darcy to the rescue. I am Vision. You get your memories back, you lose the robo voice, and you get real looking eyes, fair enough. This is what we call a fake out crown to make you think this is as far as I'll go with it. Silly you. <laughs> really can't overstate how well Catherine witches it up. This world you made will always be broken, just like you. Cold as ice. Such a fun reveal, using the clouds as cover, even if you saw it coming. Can't lie, it's a pretty badass good for now girl move. And I love how her runes are played off as violent lost control mistakes when they were purposeful blasts. But I don't need you to tell me who I am. Heck yeah, even if she's technically a villain. Sometimes you're over the villains, can't help it. Scarlet witching out. Have to appreciate that she can even magic curl her hair and her magic costume design is on point. Please, I'm sorry. No, you're not. You're cruel. Well, eh. but if you're feeling a little bad, just remember this gem. Broken. Just like you. I know where to find you. Wait. And I do not hate that the door is staying open to more Agatha. One last time, we need to acknowledge how Catherine Hahn went from in-universe nosy neighbor, adapting to each decade in style perfectly, and it was all an act for her character, to then totally earnest witch during her episode as Agatha, then to scenery-chewing witch in her battle with Wanda, but never losing her sincerity, and then all the way back to... Okie dokie, artichokey! So, who pays for the car removal? A family is forever. <sighs> I... This isn't actually something I can even really comment on. For real, this is on par with some of the most depressing things. I, yeah, that, that's it. it. It's too sad. Acceptance. It can be the most painful stage of grief because Wanda needs to finally confront her sorrow. She's no longer bargaining to stay in denial. She has to let go, and nothing ever makes that any easier. But mostly you're my love. These two know each other so well, she doesn't have to literally quote him so that he'll understand what she's saying. But it doesn't make it any less of a callback to the words he used to comfort her so many years ago. Vision cried in one of his very first appearances in the comics when he was accepted into the Avengers. After three movies and one entire season of this, I'm glad this is his first tier in the MCU. Who knows what I might be next? We'll say hello again. Optimism. Well, that was a silly dream. Time to go find out about mutants and stop them from existing. Oh, where's Darcy? Uh, something about debriefs are for the week. Ha. Huh. Weird. Second Blade Runner reference in a row. And it's from the same Roy Batty speech. Eh, who could blame literally anyone? He'd like to meet with you. Where? Sam Jackson in space? Sounds great! Love the fake out that she's just secluded away so that she can't hurt anyone to then reveal she's poring over the evilest book ever trying to pet cemetery her kids back. Strange's score doesn't do her any favors either. For a show that started out confusing and even goofy at times, WandaVision really nailed its theme by the end. It's impressive when you consider how they made Wanda's sitcom reality such an obvious coping mechanism for her. Everything in her life was too real with too many consequences and continual loss. So why not bring in some shenanigans? Why not have the day reset every morning with no stakes, no chance she could lose Vision again? It's genius, really. And they baited us along the whole time. Is it being done to her? Is she trapped? Is she the victim? Or is she evil? Is she doing it on purpose? And she even displays anger that puts it all into question, but as you see her reality unraveling, we can feel her grasping to keep it all together. It's about as relatable as chaos magic beings can be. This isn't the first time Wanda and Vision have had to say goodbye, but it's definitely the send-off they deserve. You know, if, if they can't just be together. WandaVision is a showcase of how we deal with grief. Even if it got a little marvelly at the end, the real villain here, the actual conflict we end the show with, was Wanda coming to terms with the final stage of grief, acceptance. And it wasn't easy. It's not neat and clean. It's terrible. Maybe the writers felt like they needed to end on the glimmer of hope that her kids could come back, or maybe Wanda is willing to do anything to bring her family back together because, yeah, that's how grief works. Just because we accept loss and try to grow past it doesn't mean we don't backslide. It doesn't mean we stop trying to cope. And the truth is that it was her grief over vision that made her create the hex in the first place, and she did let him go. 
Even with the way WandaVision ended, there are clearly infinite possibilities for a second season, even under a new name, just as the continuing story of Wanda and Vision trying to find their way back to each other. White Vision is out there now, and while Hex Vision technically only unlocked the memories created before the show, that still makes him Wanda's Vision. It's sad that Hex Vision is probably gone forever, at least in this form, but maybe it's for the best since he was a creation of Wanda's grief. Is he even truly an independent person? I don't know. I really appreciate this show. I admire that they stuck with the theme of grief and didn't muddy it with Doctor Strange or even Mephisto. I think there's plenty of room in Wanda's future to delve into all kinds of different things. And I'll definitely watch it. Either way, we've got Scarlet Witch in the MCU now and Vision is out there not eating food or whatever. And who knows, maybe the next conditional Vision will eat food. Probably not, but you know who does eat food? These guys. And you know who's often tired of the same thing every week? Also these guys, especially this one. Actually just getting him to sit down and eat at mealtimes can be a challenge. But that's where today's sponsor, HelloFresh, comes in. He wanted to help cook the meal, so... But they have so many recipes that help us break out of our dinner ruts and remove the need to like, what, make up a recipe? Or read someone's life story while finding one online? Yeah, no, it's all here on these super easy to follow cards. We just had it on the counter while we were making this HelloFresh meal that they delivered right to our door. Believe it or not, you could get up to 12 free meals delivered to you for free by clicking the link at the top of the description, hellofresh.com, and using code CINEMAWINS12. We're making the creamy cilantro steak bowls here, and it's so great to have exactly the amount of each ingredient we needed for the meal, no waste. Plus, everything was fresh, easy to prepare, and cook, and even with filming us doing all of this, it was still pretty fast, and HelloFresh has quick and easy meals that only take 10 to 20 minutes. Oh, and also it was delicious. Jude ate really fast, like in the time I set up the camera, so that's why it's just Julia and me. But I promise, he was a fan. And actually when Jude was just born, it was a huge help having meals delivered all ready to go like this. And it's also awesome to not have to make a decision once you're hungry at dinner like we always did before HelloFresh. So highly recommended for a pregnant woman's hunger and we're gonna be happy to have it with a little girl on the way. So if you wanna check it out, go to hellofresh.com and use code CINEMAWINS12 to get 12 free meals, including free shipping. Thank you for always supporting my sponsors. It greatly helps the channel. And with that, we're inside a few weeks of Julia's due date, so there won't be a video next week, maybe the week after, but it all depends. But here's a few different ones that are coming up.